Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. All right, lesson six, Euler's number E. All right, so if you are a football fan, Oilers are the Houston Oilers originally, and now they're considered the Tennessee Titans. Or maybe you're a hockey fan, okay? Edmonton Oilers, why am I talking about sports? I'm just trying to get you to remember how to pronounce this guy's name. It is not Euler, like Bueller. It is Euler. So lesson six is all about Euler's number, E. So it's a number E, so E, huh? The number E, E is a letter. All right, so if you look on your graphing calculator, you will see an E right here. So if I hit second E, there it is. There's Euler's number. And the reason it is E is because it's the first letter of his name and it is not an O. All right, so anyway, this classwork, or this lesson is be begins with a video. So I'm gonna read what the teacher edition says and then we'll begin here. So it says exercise one through three. In these exercises, students find exponential equations that model the increasing height of water in a cylindrical tank as it doubles over a fixed time interval. These preliminary exercises lead to the discovery of Euler's number E at the end of the lesson. As a demonstration, show students the 47 second video in which the height of water in a tank doubles repeatedly until it fills the tank completely. Note how long it takes for the height to appear to change at all. I can't show a video within a video, the resolution just gets all messed up. So I'm just going to post a link to that video in the comments below. Okay, so this is a good time to, con to discuss constraints and how quantities cannot realistically increase exponentially without bound due to physical constraints to the growth. In this case, the water tank has a finite volume and there is only a finite amount of water on the planet. Likewise, the main constraint of, to population growth is the variability of such resources as food and land. And we're reaching our maximum, by the way. After watching the video, students may work individually or in pairs. Point out students that the growth shown in the video happened much more quickly than it happens in the problems below, but the underlying concept is the same. Students should be prepared to share their solutions with class. Okay, so there is the setup for the first exercise one through three. Number one says, assume that there is an is initially one centimeter, centimeter of water in the tank and the height of the water doubles every 10 seconds. Write an equation that can be used to calculate the height H of T of the water in the tank at any time T. Okay, so Let's do that. So we're going to model this. So we're going to say H of T equals, okay? So what we're going to do is, the key here is doubles. That tells us what our base is. Okay, so that means we're going to have a exponential function with base two, and it's going to double every 10 seconds. So it's going to be the time divided into 10 second intervals. So the function is h of t equals two to the power of t being time divided by 10. Okay, so then it says, how would the equation in exercise one change if the initial depth of the water in the tank was two centimeters? Well, if it's empty and it's time zero, zero over 10 is zero. Two to the zero is one. Hmm. 
how would the, ex the equation in the exercise change if the initial depth of the tank was two centimeters? Well, since this equals one, how do I get H of T to equal two? So this has to equal two. So what, if this is one, right? If, a, if T time is zero, zero over 10 is zero, two to the zero is one. So if this equals one, then it has to equal two times one, and this is one, so it's two times two to the T divided by 10. That makes sense? Okay, so the initial depth of the water in the tank was a half a centimeter. Well, in that case, we would say, remember this equals one when time is zero. So H of T will now equal one half times two to the T divided by 10. And part C says the initial depth of the water in the tank was 10 centimeters. Hopefully you get the idea here now. So that is going to equal 10 times one, where one is two to the t divided by 10. All right. D, the initial depth of the water in the tank was a centimeters for some positive real number a. Well, that's going to be h of t equals a times two to the t divided by 10. Okay, so now we're going to do some more manipulating of this equation to understand what each component does. So now part three says, how would the equation in exercise two, part D, this one right here, change if the height tripled every 10 seconds? Well, remember that A is your initial starting point, your, your depth initially. But now if it's going to triple, then it's going to be three times the time divided by 10. Okay, B says the height doubled every five seconds. Remember time is up here. So every five seconds doubling, you're going to get H of T equals some A. And now we're back to double. So that three will go back to a two but now it's going to be time divided into five second intervals. Okay, so there's part B. Okay, page two brings us to part C and it says, well now what if the height quadrupled every second? So we're going to have the function H of T equals some A times quadruple means quad means four every second. So before it was T divided by 10, remember that? That means the time it was doing something every 10 seconds. In this case, it's doing it every second, but this is not necessary either because time divided by one is just simply time. So the equation would be H of T equals some A times four to the power of T. And then finally, D says the height halved every 10 seconds. So H of T is going to equal some A times one half to the power of T divided by 10. All right, example. Now, before I go to this example, I'm going to bring in something. So let me just do this real quick. Okay, so here's the definition for average rate of change. This was covered in Algebra 1, so that was two years ago. You do Algebra 1 in most, most schools, and then you do Geometry, and then you do Algebra 2. Some schools do Algebra 1, Algebra 2, then Geometry, but most do Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. So this is either one or two years since you've seen this. And so Algebra 1, Module 3 and 4 was average rate of change. Given a function f whose domain contains the intervals of real numbers, closed interval from A to B, and whose range is a subset of the real numbers, the average rate of change on the interval from A to B is defined by 
the function of B minus the function A divided by B minus A. In other words, the Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, it means the same thing. It's rate of change, it's slope, okay? Uh, but this is just a quick review of that. F of B minus F of A over B minus A. All right, so now let's get to this example. Consider two identical water tanks, each of which begins with the height of water one centimeter. Okay, so their heights are beginning with the same amount of water. Let's highlight this important information. Each which begins with a height of one centimeter. Okay. And fills with water at different rates. Which equations can be used to calculate the height of water in each tank at time t? So it says to use h of one for the first tank and h of two. Let me use a different color for the second tank. All right, so if both tanks start filling at the same time, which one fills first? Okay, so the first thing we're doing is we are starting with, we need a formula. So we have H sub one of T equals, okay, so what's it doing? Uh, we're figuring that they're, they're going to double Consider two identical tanks, each of which begins with a height of water of one centimeter. So that would mean that this is one, that's my A, and I don't need to show one because anything times one is itself, so there's no need to show the A in this case when it's one. They fill at different rates. All right, so tank one, it says here the height of the water in tank one doubles every second. So it's one, my A, times two every second, two to the T. So after one second, we'd have a height of two. So at zero seconds, that's what we're starting with, two to the zero. So if I think of that, H sub one of zero is going to equal the initial height of one centimeter times two to the time of zero which is two to the zero is one and one times one is one. So that's our starting value, okay? So H of zero. So H of one would be two to the one, which is two. So therefore it started at one centimeter and it doubled in a second, now it's two. So H, of, H sub one of T equals two to the T. And this one, the height of the water in the tank triples every second. So that would be H sub two with respect to time equals starting with one centimeter, not needed because one times anything is that anything, but this tank triples every second. So there are the two formulas. A says if both tanks start filling at the same time, which one fills first? Well, should be pretty obvious that it's going to be H of two equals T cubed because, or equals three to the T. Uh, because after one second, there'll be one plus three centimeters or four. And this one after one second will be one plus two or three. So three, four, and so on. I could do a T chart to show that maybe I will. And how about, no, not maybe, I will. So if I did a chart here, where this is H of one, and this is H of two. And actually I need another line here. Okay, I do not know what that did that for. Let's do this. Okay, let's try that again. This, 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 and draw it here and extend this out like so, and this will be mine. <laughs> All right, this will be my T. So at T equals zero, this would be at one centimeter, and this would be at one centimeter. When this is at one, two to the one is 
two, three to the one is three. At time two seconds, two squared is four, three squared is nine. At three, three, two to the three is two times two times two, and three times three times three. And so what we're really doing here is doubling h of one and tripling h of two. Three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, 27 times three is 81, 81 times three is 243. And obviously you can see just after five seconds, h of two is, has a lot more water in it than h of one. So if both tanks start filling at the same time, H uh, tank two will definitely be the one that fills fastest and fill first. Part B, we wanna know the average rate of change of the height of water in, the, in these tanks over an interval that starts at a fixed time T as they are filling up. What is the formula for the average rate of change of a function F on the interval from A to B? Okay, well, I just gave that to you and it's the function at B minus the function, where did X come from? A divided by B minus A. Okay, so there's the formula. And part C says, what is the formula for the average rate of change of function H sub one on the interval from A to B? So H sub one would be H sub one of B minus H sub one of A divided by B minus A, <clears throat> okay? And then part D says, let's calculate the average rate of change of the function H sub one on the intervals T to T plus 0 0.1, which is an interval of one tenth of a second long starting at an unknown time T. So we're gonna take H of one B, that's our finish, our end, our right bound, okay? So that's going to be H sub one of B, which is T plus 0 0.1 minus H sub one of my interval start, which is T divided by T plus 0 0.1 minus T. <clears throat> okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in H sub one of T plus 0 0.1, H sub one of T plus 0 0.1 would be, um, two, our base two, but instead of T, it's going to be this value here, T plus 0 0.1. So it's going to be that minus two to the power of T all over, and T plus 0 0.1 minus T, the T's cancel, and we just get zero. Point one. All right, so now let's simplify that further. Two to the this minus two to that is going to be um, hmm, let's think about this. Okay, so we're just going to use our rules here and T plus 0 0.1 when we're adding exponents. So two to the three plus one can be written as two to the three times two to the one, okay? And that's what we're going to do here. So it's going to be two to the T times two to the 0 0.1 minus two to the T over 0 0.1. Okay, so now I have two terms in my numerator, okay? This is a term minus a second term, 
Both terms have 2t in common, so I can factor. So I can factor out a 2 to the power of t, and that's going to be times 2 to the 0 0.1 minus 1. If I distribute that, I will get this. Still all over 0 0.1. Okay, so this is going to equal 2 to the t, and then I'm going to do a decimal approximation here. So if I open up my calculator, and I put 2 to the 0 0.1 minus 1, I get... 0.0717735. It's kind of long, so let me just do this so I can see it. And so it's going to be times 0 0.0717735. And that four will round to five. Let's just round it there, all divided by 0. 0.0. One. Okay, and dividing it by 0.1 is just going to move the decimal over. So let me extend the page. And so this is going to equal 2 to the power of t times, and dividing by 0.1 will just move my decimal this way. So I'm going to get 0 0.71. Seven, seven, three, five. Okay. Okay, so then if I go up here, I have two to the t. Two to the t is equal to h sub one of t. So now I can just rewrite this now as simply. 0 0.717735 times h sub 1 of t, okay? I just got that from substitution. h sub 1 of t is 2 to the t, and we had a 2 to the t here, all right? So there is our average rate of change. All right, page three is exercise four through eight, actually four through six. So it says for the second tank, calculate the average change in height of H sub two from time T to T plus 0 0.1 seconds. Express the answer as a number times the value of the original function at time T, explain the meaning of these findings. So we're going to use the same formula as we did before but it's going to be, why is that not green? It is going to be H sub two of T plus 0 0.1 minus H sub two of T divided by T plus 0 0.1 minus T. <clears throat> All right. And those T's are going to cancel. So that is going to give us, um, let's just substitute in and simplify. H sub 2 of T plus 0 0.1. Well, what is H sub 2? H sub 2 is right here. H sub 2 of T is 3 to the power of T. So H sub two of this would be T or three, I mean, to the power of T plus 0 0.1 minus three to the power of T all over and T minus T goes away and we're left with 0 0.1, all right? So it's the same as the last one, except our base is three. So then when I simplify this, I have three to the T, 
three to the T plus 0 0.1. And our rule says we can say this instead, three to the T times three to the 0 0.1 is equivalent to this minus three to the T. Now I have two terms divided by that or broken up by that minus sign, separated by the minus sign, I should say. And I can factor out a three to the T. And so if I factor out three to the T here, it's gonna be three to the T times three to the, three to the 0 0.1, okay, minus one. Three to the T times one is three to the T. Okay, and that's still, I did forget to write, see if I can squeeze this in here. This is over 0 0.1. So again, I'm going to put it over 0 0.1. Okay, so now that I factored that out, I can now say that that is equal to 3 to the power of t times, and I'll use my calculator here, and it's going to be, now I'm going to do 3 to the power of 0.1 or 0 0.1 minus one. And that is going to give me 0.116123. Let's just go out to there. The next one's a one, it would round. And this is all divided by 0 0.1. All right. So dividing by 0 0.1 means to move the decimal place one place to the right. So I'll move this up to here and that's gonna give me three to the power of T times 1.16123. And since three to the T, now if I go back here, three to the power of T is H sub two of T, I can substitute that in now. So it would be, equivalent to, I should have an equal sign here. So this is going to equal 1.16123 times H sub two of T. Because three to the power of T is that. I just moved it to the end, okay? And that is an approximation too, by the way, because I rounded. So it's 1.16123 is the rate of change, whereas the other rate of change was only 0.717735, okay? So it says, explain the meaning of these findings. Okay, so you could say on average over the time interval from T to T plus 0 0.1, the water in tank two rises at a rate of approximately 1.16123 times H sub two of T centimeters per second. Okay. And now number five. For each tank, Calculate the average change in height from time t seconds to t plus 0 0.001 second. Express the answer as a number times the value of the original function at time t. Explain the meaning of these findings. So now we're getting more precise. Okay, so we have to do this twice. So we're going to do tank one. I'll do it in red. Tank one. So it was h sub one of t plus 0 0.001 minus h sub one of t all divided by 0 Okay, so that just came from t plus 0 0.001 minus t, just gives us that number, the t's cancel, all right? So when I do that, I am now going to write what that equals. So it's going to now be two to the power of t plus 
0 0.001 minus 2 to the t all over 0 0.001. That is going to simplify when I factor out the 2 to the t as 2 to the t times, actually before I factor it out, I want to rewrite this as 2 to the t times 2 to the 0 0.001 minus 2 to the t. Okay, so I just broke this up into two different components and multiplied. And that's now going to factor out a 2t. So factor out a 2t, and that's going to give me 2 times 2 to the power of 0 0.001 minus 1 when I factored that. So if I go into my calculator now and punch that in, um, 2 to the power of 0 0.001, move out of the exponent, minus 1 gives me the decimal. <laughs> All right. See this negative four, that's the scientific notation moving it left four. So it's point left four would be three zeros. So it'd be decimal point then zero, 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 six, nine, three, three, nine. That seven will make that eight, nine. Okay, so that's far enough right there. Um, zero, 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 six, nine, three. Don't even have to go out that far. I'll just go out to here. All right. And so then when I divide that by, by the way, these all should be divided by 0 0.001. I forgot that. 0 0.001. 0 0.001. That is going to give me an approximation and it will be approximately, this will move the decimal three places to the right, one, two, three, it will be 0 0.6933. Nine, which is right here. Okay, so there is tank one. Tank two, we're going to do the same thing. Now let me go back like this, draw a line here. And now I have to do the same thing for H sub two. Okay, so that's the original. And then what we need to do is the same thing we did in the last one. H sub two is three to the T. So it's going to be three to the T plus 0 0.001 minus three to the T all over 0 0.001. And that is going to equal three to the T times three to the 0 0.001 minus three to the T. And then I'm going to be able to factor out three to the T and that's gonna give me three to the, I keep putting a dot there, I don't know why. Three to the power of 0 0.001 minus one. Okay, and then I say that that's going to equal, and actually over here, uh, I left my 2t out. That still should be times 2t. And this still should be times 2t. But putting it back in the original function, then that should be h of 2 or h sub 1 of t. So over here, I'll write it. This would now be written as 0.69339 times h sub one of t. So there is that one. Now let me go back to here. And again, I keep forgetting that. 0 0.001 dividing, 0 0.001. 
All right, so then I'm going to plug that in my calculator and I'm going to get three to the power of 0 0.001 minus one will give me the decimal 0 0.0019. So that is going to be an approximation of 0 0.00. 10992. 10992 divided by 0 0.001, but that's still going to be times 3t. Not 3 times t, 3 to the power of t. Okay, this decimal here, three decimal places, will move this three decimal places. So my approximation is now going to be three to the T times this, which is 1.0992. And one more two, the one would round up to two. And instead of putting three to the power of T, that is my times H sub two of T. Let me rewrite that, it's kind of squished. Move this down here. Okay, and that three T is now going to be times H sub two of T. So there is the approximation of tank two, here's the approximation of tank one. So this is centimeters per second, by the way. So you'd say over the time interval of T to T plus 0 0.001, the water in tank two rises at an average rate of approximately 1.09922 times H sub two of T. Okay, Sec centimeters per second. All right. All right, number six says, in exercise five, the average rate of change of the height of the water in tank one on the interval from T to T plus 0 0.001 can be described by the expression C sub one times two to the T. And the average rate of change, that's cylinder one, by the way, and the average rate of change of the height of the water in tank two on the interval of t to t plus 0 0.001 can be described by the expression cylinder two, c sub two times three to the power of t. So our bases are different, three and two. What are the approximate values of c sub one and c sub two? So this is, this is, C sub one. This is C sub two. The value that you're going to multiply by to get one. So actually this is C sub one and this is C sub two. So C sub one is approximately 0 0.69339. C sub two is approximately 1.09922. All right, page four brings us to number seven and it says as an experiment, Let's look for a value of B so that the height of the water can be described by H of T equals B to the T. Then the expression for the average rate of change on the interval from T to T plus 0 0.001 is one times H of T. Write out the expression um, for the average rate of change of H of T equals B to the T on this interval. Okay, well, it's the average rate of change. So there it is right there. Write out the expression for average rate of change. And the average rate of change is going to be the function value 
which is h of t, in this case, h of b. So you would say h of sub b of the final interval t plus 0 0.001 minus h sub b of t, all divided by this minus this, which would just give us 0 0.001. Okay, and then B says, set your expression in part A equal to one times H of T. So then, and, and reduce to an expression involving a single B. Okay, so just to save some time here, <laughs> uh, I'm, going, I'm just going to move this down here now. And, equals uh, one times H of T, okay? So I set this expression equal, and now it says to reduce to an expression involving a single B. Um, so I guess I want a sub B here. Set your expression in part A equal to one times H of T and reduce to an expression involving a single B. Okay, so we're just gonna keep doing what we did before. This is going to split up to H sub B of T plus 0 0.00, not 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 001. Um, oh, no. If this is H sub B, where B is just a function with this expression, then I want to just take that B to the power of T plus 0 0.001 minus b to the power of t all over 0 0.001. And that is going to equal, since 1 is just 1 and h sub b of t is just going to be b to the power of t. Actually, this should not be there. They said to set it equal to one times H of T. But H of T is B to the power of T, okay? H of B is B to the power of this. And then I can factor. So this is going to be B to the T Okay, just one moment. Okay, again, we have two terms, minus sign in between, b to the power of t in each term, because I can rewrite this as b to the t times b to the 0 0.001 minus b to the t equals b to the t. And then the b to the t can get factored out. So b to the t times b to the 0 0.001 minus 1 equals b to the t. And yeah, these are all divided by 0 0.001, 0 0.001. And that is going to shift it over. So what's going to happen here is we're going to get um, let me try to explain this. Think of this as over one. 
So if we cross multiply, we're going to get B to the T times B to the 0 0.001 minus one equal to, because B to the T times one is B to the T. And then B to the T times, so then this will be B to the T times zero point zero zero one. So I'm just cross multiplying here. One times this is this. Point zero zero one times this is this. And I have a B to the T on both sides. Whenever you have something on both sides of an equation, they cancel. Okay, I can divide both sides by B, B to the power of T, and that will give me B to the 0 0.001 minus one equals 0 0.001. And then when I add one to both sides, I can get B to the 0 0.001 equals 1.001. Whew. And there it is involving a single B base. Okay, now part C says, now we wanna find the value of B. That satisfies the equation you found in part B, but we do not have a way to explicitly solve this equation. Look back at exercise six. Which two consecutive integers have B between them? So if I go back to exercise six, it's between 0.69 and 1.09, okay? So what we can say here is, okay, so we're looking for the base of the exponent that produces a rate of change on a small interval near t, that is one times h of t. When that base is two, the value of the rate is approximately 0 0.69 times h of t. And when the base is three, the value is raised of this rate is roughly 1.1 h. That is coming from these two values right here that we've got in number in part six. So with that being said, since one is between 0.69 and 1.1, the base we are looking for is somewhere between two and three. Okay, so part D says, use your calculator and a guess and check method to find an approximate value of B to two decimal places. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is, again, here's our B to the power of 0 0.001. So what I'm going to do is go to Y equals in my calculator and clear anything there and put X to the power of 0.001. Zero, one, and hit enter. Okay, that is our function. I'm then going to go into my table and switch it to independent variable to ask. And then I go to second graph for my table. So I'm trying to find a value between two and three. So I'm gonna start with two. So I press two and I hit enter. So this is going to calculate, this is actually two to the power of 0 0.001. And I got 1.0007. So then I'm gonna try 2.1. Remember, we're trying to find the closest value between two and three. And we want 1.001. Right now we have 1.0007. So we're too low, so we have to go up. Still too low, 2.2. One point, okay, so the, the tenth, hundred thousandth, ten thousandth moved up one value, but we're still not to the third uh, uh, thousandth position being one, so we have to keep going. 2.3, still 0 0.0008, 2.4, enter, getting closer, 2.5, Enter. So we, now it's more than two and a half. So we're between two and a half and three. It's like a higher, lower game, 2.6. Keep going. There's 1.001, but that's being rounded. 
So if I go 2.7 and hit enter, let me see if I can change something here. So I've run out of space here, so let me clear these. We're at 2.6, 2.6 gave us this. Let me go into my uh, table set, see if I can figure out decimal places. Because this is rounding. So if I go to the home screen right now and I take um, 2.6 to the power of 0 0.001 and hit enter. See, we're still not at one. So maybe I should do it here. 2.6 to the power of, actually I'm now at 2.7 to the power of 0 0.001. Still not at 0 0.001, so it's more than 2.7. So try 2.8 to the power of 0 0.001, enter. Finally, we're at 0 0.001. So now I know I'm between 2.7 and 2.8. So now I'm gonna go out another decimal place. So now I know it's at least 2.7, but not more than 2.8. So I'll start with 2.7 one to the power of 0 0.001. And as you can see now, it's not one again. So it's more than 2.71. 2.72 to the power of 0 0.001, enter. And there it is, 2.72. So it says here, use your calculator and a guess and check method to find an approximate value of B to two decimal places. So there it is, 2.72. So I would say B is approximately 2.72. Okay, number eight. Let's get this out of the way here. Extend the page, move this up here. Number eight, verify that for the value of B found in exercise seven, this equals this, where this equals this. All right. So we're finally wrapping this up. Okay, I'm just checking something there. So we're going to take this h of b of t times that minus h sub b of t over 0 0.001, this right here. And so I'll just write it, h sub b of t plus 0 0.001 minus h sub b of t, all divided by 0 0.001. And we're going to set that equal to, and we're going to substitute our B in. So H of B is 2.72 to the power of T plus 0 0.001 minus 2.72 to the power of T. Or I'm sorry, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. Okay, that's our ending interval because of what we just found with the calculator. And that's all divided by 0 0.001. So now we've got to clean this up. So our rule states that 2.72 to this power is the same as 2.72 to the T times 2.72 to the 0 0.001 minus 2.72 to the 0 0.001. So I'm going to factor out um, 
Actually, this is wrong. This is to the T. This is wrong. That's to the T. Minus H of B, H sub B of T is 2.72 to the T. So this is to the T. So 2.72 to the T is in both terms. I can factor it out. 2.72 T times 2.72 to the 0 0.001 minus one all over 0 0.001. And I should have that here as well. Okay. And then this is going to equal 2.72 to the power of T times, and I'll get my calculator, and 2.72 times 0 0.001 is 1.001 minus one. So 2.72 T times 1.0100 minus one. all over 0 0.001. And that is going to become 2.72 to the power of T times, well, 1.00100 minus one is just simply 0 0.001. Okay, and divided by 0 0.001. ,001. So this is divided by itself so that is going to be approximately one, because I did round by the way, approximately one times 2.72 to the T. And therefore that is one times H sub B of T. I guess I don't need this parentheses. If I just use a dot. Okay, so it's 1.00 times H sub B of T. This is H sub B of T. Okay, so let's conclude. So what we can say here is when the height of the water increased by a factor of 2.72 units per second, the height at any time is equal to the rate of change of height at that time. Okay. So what did that, what is this 2.72? Well, here we go. Here's what this is all leading up to. If I now go to my calculator and hit second E and hit enter, that's the value of Euler's number, 2.718, which rounds to 2.72, okay? All right, what page are we on? Five, page five brings us to the end of lesson six. Review the lesson summary on Euler's number and average rate of change and go to your problem set.